So here's what it looks like with the stencil laid down and then I fogged it first with a yellow enamel spray paint and then I go over it with the one-shot enamels and a lettering brush to give it the look that it was once lettered properly and it has weathered over time. Let's get this show on the road, shall we? So what I'm going to show you here today is uh, my own style of faux, old school lettering. Um, there's different ways to do this and there's different videos on YouTube. You can check everything out, see what what style fits you best but in my opinion i just wanted a faded look so i thin out my lettering enamels um, more than usual obviously and if you're working with a light color and dark surface that's even better because the dark surface really wants to overpower it which is what we want anyways we want the faded look so then i try to uh, first i'll fill in the color i'll fill in the faded color and then i'll go back and i'll try and uh do the brush strokes the way it would kind of look if I was hand lettering it in the first place. I mean, when guys originally do hand lettering, um, you're going to see thick and thin areas. What we do is we, we, we pull our color from our uh, paint container and you use like a little palette and then you use uh, mineral spirits to kind of thin it out. So it depends on you know how hard you want that brush to pull as to how much paint or thinner you're going to put on it. So long story short is I fill in the color first, the faded color, and then I go back and I try to make it look like as if I hand lettered it. Now in the case of small lettering it's kind of tough but we can do that. I can use a smaller brush as well but um, I think you get the idea. We're, we're not going for perfection here, we're going for the effect. So uh, we'll see how it turns out. Stick around town. <laughs> Okay, so there's a couple ways I can do this uh, dot that I forgot to cut out of my stencil. I can just put my plastic circle stencil up and I can just run the knife around it. Or I can uh, draw it first and then hand cut it with an X-Acto knife. And really that's the way to do it because you want things to look hand cut. So uh, get a rough idea what size that hole is. See, I don't, I don't care that it looks that way because it's supposed to look unevenly worn. So the whole point is to look like we're seeing the old brush strokes starting to thin and weather. So you start seeing them all. So here's the difference. 
See, these two lines haven't been done yet. All they have been done is fogged with a light mist of the yellow. And then I've come back with the one-shot enamels. And I've gone over these letters with a pretty stiff bristle brush to put the brush line strokes in it the way it should have looked if it was lettered properly originally when it was new. And it wouldn't, uh, it, there are those who will say, well, you didn't hand letter that right. Well, I do know how to hand letter. I've done it. I've been in graphics a long time. We do things with vinyl and the computer these days, but I do get jobs where I do get to hand letter and pinstripe occasionally. But um, the reason I don't do it proper is because it, it wouldn't serve the purpose. I want the, the lettering to look weathered, so I really got to manipulate it. So I need a stencil to manipulate what I want for the look. If I was just going to letter it, then I would hand letter it, okay? But it would look a lot newer, and that's not what we're after.
So after I've got all the brush strokes in, now I have oversprayed it with a light mist of green again so that the lettering is toned down in comparison to the main logo. Now they wouldn't have done this originally, but I just want the logo to stick out. There's a lot of lettering here and a lot of yellow, so I want the logo to be just a little bit brighter uh, in its worn look than the all this lettering down here and I still have to put the two lines up there but um, last thing I will do now is uh, put a dull coat on it and then uh, after tomorrow after it dries we'll put in the uh, drop shadow on the ABF And also, the green fenders that I painted have now been painted a satin black because ABF's fenders were indeed black. Cab was green, fenders and bumper black with the stripes. This one has yet to be painted. Of course, I had worked so hard to get them looking nice green, but uh, we will... Uh, after I steel wool it down a little bit more on the top there, uh, those will be black as well. And I haven't really decided what I'm going to do here because that is the actual, real, legit patina of the truck. I mean, this truck okay was not ABF it was basically pretty much private but the cab the yellow cab uh, was on it and the frame was red and um, somebody uh, contacted me and said that the the running gear and frame was an originally a coke truck and the yellow cab was placed on it a place called Jersey Overnight Express is who had the truck now we don't know this for sure but they're pretty convinced uh, based on the features of the truck that it's actually a former Jersey Overnight Express. So anyways, um, back to the patina. Let me show you from the stairs what I'm talking about. Now, ABF's trucks didn't start out yellow, but, I mean, a backstory could be that they bought this truck and it was yellow and they painted it for their purposes. Because that is the actual, real, legit patina on the truck. So I haven't decided totally where we're going. And of course that wheel will be white. I did get the back wheel white today. That one's back to being white. So we got three out of four white and I'll get to that. The only problem is that I can't spray that one because I painted black behind there on the hub. And I really don't want to just spray white and have to repaint that black and reach through there and paint black. So I may have to just hand paint that green white again. There's a lot of paint on there. It ain't going to fall apart. The paint will hold it together. Ah! So anyways, if you like what you see, make sure you like and subscribe. Hit the bell so you know... Uh, when a new video is coming up because uh, we're coming into spring and I got a lot of material to put on here. So you're going to want to stick around town. Till next time, keep that hammer down, safe and sound.